Let's say that you wanted to see higher dimensions, and no, not just 4D or 5D, but every single dimension up to infinity. However, if we use the traditional projection formulas, we will quickly encounter some major issues. Firstly, drawing objects in very high dimensions is not an easy task. Let's use a hypercube as an example. The number of points in a hypercube doubles for every dimension added. So, a 4D hypercube has a manageable 16 points, a 5D one has 32 points, a 6D one has 64, and so on. Eventually, when we reach 30 dimensions, we will already have over 1 billion points to render, and many, many more edges. Drawing objects with this many points and edges would take no less than the world's best supercomputers. But what if we didn't have to draw every single point and edge? What if we set the rotations for every dimension to look at the hypercube from the corner? Well, that is exactly how the algorithm I'm explaining today works. Disclaimer, please note that I am still working on the algorithm and is currently only completely accurate to 9 dimensions. However, it can still give you a pretty accurate idea of how very high dimensions would look. Anyways, take a good look at this 8D hypercube viewed from the corner. What do you notice? You notice patterns. So many patterns that it becomes confusing to look at. For example, we can see that there are 16 octagons facing inward on the hexadecagon. In addition to octagons, there are also 16 squares on the sides. We can see that from each vertex of the hexadecagon, there are 8 lines going outwards, dividing the angle into 7 equal angles. We can see that there are 2 rings of pentagonish shapes. Now, look at the 7D hypercube. Similarly to the 8D hypercube, there are 14 hexagons facing inwards, but this time, they touch the center. Also, similarly, you can see 7 lines coming out of each vertex of the tetradecagon, dividing the angle into 6 parts. However, one major difference is that there are no squares on the sides of the tetradecagon. Instead, there are parallelograms. Because of the major differences between even and odd dimensions, the even and odd dimensions will require slightly different algorithms. There is definitely a way to improve this and combine them into the same algorithm, and I will try and find one in the future. Anyways, I will start by explaining the odd algorithm. This algorithm is only used for odd dimensions, such as 1, 3, 5, 7, and so on. Let's first use this 5D hypercube. We first must find the side length. To find this, we must know the radius of the shape. Let's set the radius to 180. Now, to find the side length S, we use 360 times sine of 90 over dimension to get 111.246. Then, we must find the number of iterations to draw. This is because many of these shapes cannot be drawn with only one layer of calculations. We can find this using the floor of dimension over 2, which is 2. Now, we can begin drawing, starting on the 0th iteration. Firstly, set the angle, which we'll call theta, to 0. Next, we must find the number of parallelograms to draw. This is 2 times ceiling of dimension over 2 minus 3 plus iterations times 2. Plugging in 5 for the dimension, we get 3. Next, find the starting point. x equals 180 times sine theta minus 90 over dimension, and y equals 180 cosine theta minus 90 over dimension, which is negative 55.623, 171.19. Using this point as the top left corner, Draw a parallelogram with the interior angles of 90 minus 90 over dimension, which is 72 for 5D, and with the side length S. Then, starting from the same point, draw a line pointing at 180 minus 90 over dimension plus, in parentheses, 180 over dimension times floor of dimension over 2, which is 234 degrees, with the same side length. Now, draw another congruent parallelogram starting at the end point. But for the odd dimensions, we only draw the number of squares minus 2. However, if we were in higher dimensions, then draw more squares, each time decreasing the angle of 180 over dimension. Anyways, here is an example of the zeroth iteration with 7 dimensions. As you can see, there are 5 squares, but only 3 are drawn. However, the 2 omitted squares have to be specific. They are always the 2 squares that have an angle closest to 180. Anyways, the first square is at an angle of theta plus 180 minus 90 over 7 plus 180 over 7 times floor of 7 over 2, 
which is 244 and 2 sevenths degrees. The angle of the second square is 180 over 7 less than 244 and 2 sevenths, which is 1710 minus 180 over 7, or 218 and 4 sevenths. The next one should be at 192 and 6 sevenths, and 167 and 1 sevenths, but these are the two squares that are closest to 180 and therefore are omitted. Finally, the fifth square is at 141 and 3 sevenths. And here is an example in the ninth dimension, with angles of 250, 230, 210, 190 omitted, 170 omitted, 150, and 130. But anyways, back to the fifth dimension. Now we change theta by 180 over dimension, and plugging in 5, we get 36. Repeat the whole process, except we now start at 180 sine 36, 180 cosine 36. And don't forget to also offset all the square angles by 36. Repeat this until we go a full circle, which is dimension times 2 times. Now, moving on to the first iteration. As the iteration increases, the ring of squares will be smaller. Higher iterations generally follow the same algorithm to the zeroth iteration, except the final iteration is different. Because the first iteration is the last iteration for the fifth dimension, the code would be different. First, we find the origin point. Let A be 45 plus 45 over dimension, and B be 2 times side length times cosine A. The X and Y are B cosine A plus theta and B sine A plus theta, respectively. Next, draw the same parallelogram starting at this origin point. The point opposite to the origin point should touch 0, 0. Now, change theta by 180 over dimension, and repeat it 10 times in a circle, similar to in iteration 0. And now, we have this shape that resembles a decagram, but with 10 lines going to the origin. Now, combine iteration 0 and 1, and you get a completed 5D hypercube. Here is the final iteration for the 7th dimension the 9th dimension, and the 11th dimension as an example. Now, let's examine the middle iterations. Iterations that aren't the zeroth, but also aren't the last. These only exist from the 7th dimension and beyond. I will use a 7D hypercube as an example. Plugging in 7 for the dimension and 1 for the iteration, we get 2 times ceiling of 3.5 minus 3 plus 1 times 2, which is 3 squares. Let C be 90 minus 360 over dimension for the seventh dimension, and 180 over dimension minus 1 minus iteration for all other dimensions. This part is most likely kind of wrong, because the seventh dimension shouldn't be an exclusive formula, and I will hopefully find a fix to it. Anyways, the first square angle is theta plus 180 plus C. Then for each square, the angle decreases by C. So, we will end up with the angles of 218 and 4 sevenths, 180, and 141 and 3 sevenths. Finally, omit the square with an angle of 180. Now here's an example of the first iteration with the ninth dimension, and the second iteration. And the zeroth, first, and second iterations for theta equals zero would look like this. And here is a complete 7D hypercube with all 14 thetas. And that's basically it for the odd algorithm. Time for the even algorithm. The even algorithm only works for even dimensions such as 2D, 4D, 6D, 8D, etc. Let's use the 6th dimension as an example. First, find the side length. Assuming the radius of the dodecagon is 180, the side length is 93.175. Let theta equal to 0. The starting point is x equals 180 sine theta and y equals 180 cosine theta, which is 0, 180. The total number of iterations is dimension over 2 minus 1, or 2. Let's begin at the zeroth formula. The number of squares uses the same formula, which gives us 3 squares. First, draw a square with side length s at an angle of theta plus 90 over dimension, so 15 degrees. The first square angle is theta plus 270 minus 90 over dimension. Plugging in 6 for dimension, we get 0 plus 270 minus 15 equals 255. Once again, the next square is 180 over dimension less. This gives us 225 for the second square, and 195 for the third. Next, we omit the square with an angle closest to and greater than 180. In this case, it is 195. For even dimensions, 
we only have to omit one square. Now, increase the theta by 180 over dimension and repeat this dimension times 2 times. And that is iteration 0 completed. Now, we must find the starting point for higher iterations. Let a equal 2s times cosine 90 minus 180 over dimension. Let b equal 1 minus 1 minus a over 180 to the power of the iteration. The x and y will be sine theta minus sine theta plus 90 over dimension times b and cosine theta minus cosine theta plus 90 over dimension times b, respectively. Finally, draw the square at an angle of theta plus 90 over dimension. Repeating this 12 times gives us this shape, resembling a dodecagram within a 12-pointed star. Now, combine the two iterations, and here is a complete 6D hypercube. Assuming the first iteration wasn't the last iteration, you would also have to draw dimension minus 3 plus 2 times iteration, or 3 squares, and omit the one greater than and closest to 180, just like before. And that is it for the even algorithm. I understand that the algorithms were complicated, and even wrong in some parts, but keep in mind that I am still working on them and trying to find solutions. To sum it up, using this algorithm can make it drastically easier to render hypercubes in very high dimensions by constructing them with geometric shapes rather than by using the complicated projection algorithms. Hopefully in the future, I will improve this algorithm and make an updated explanation video. Until next time, bye.